This is Yesai Ferdinand and you're listening to a bonus episode of Invalid Opinion. In this mini episode, I'm going to talk about Ziara, an Indonesian art house movie by Bebe Purwanegara about an elderly woman's journey to find the truth about her husband's death. So, stay tuned! Now, I've watched almost a lot, I said, maybe a fair share amount of Indonesian art house movies, but this one is particularly special because I got to watch it on a cinema, which is really rare to think about it because usually this kind of art house movies are always uh, screened on alternative exhibition. So to watch it on cinema is really a surreal experience because there is an ambience sometimes when you watch a cinema. The movie that I talked about is Ziara, a new Indonesian art house movie by Bewe Purbanegara, which actually premiered last year on Jogja Natpek Asian Film Festival or JAF that I sadly miss again this year, uh, last year because of other things. But yeah, I've watched Ziara. And this is such a privilege, as I've said, because this movie is so amazing and such a different experience, cinematic experience even. Um, the movie is directed and written by Bebe Purbanegara, who's known for making award-winning short movies, including Starting From A and Say Hello to Yellow. Ziara is actually has an international uh, titled called A Tale of the Other Words, and it stars a 98-year-old Bah Poncho, who is now the oldest actress to be nominated as the Best Actress in Asian International Film Festival and Awards, or AIFFA, this year. And the movie follows Bah Sri, an elderly woman on a journey through Central Java to find her husband's missing tome. Now, the movie... I'm not going to spoil anything about the movie just because I think you just need to watch this and experience this yourself. But what I want to talk about is the common theme of this movie, which is I think there are three themes that are really punctuated in this movie. One is about death, of course, and two is about man and its relationship through words, uh, regardless about words as a legacy, as a promise and as a spoken language and of course there's one thing also that i think is very much the power theme of this movie which is about heroism and soldiers now when it comes to the death part i think it's really just established from the first shot of the movie which is a group of people burying a person and we don't know who they are we just see it from a point of view from someone in the grave so they are literally just scooping the dirt onto the uh, hole and I think what it does is that it creates a tone and a mindset for the audience that this movie is going to talk about death now death in this movie is not just talked in a literal sense meaning there is scenes where people are dying and being buried but also talks about people who are left behind by the deceased how the death of a person affects the person left behind and how they going through the uh, grief or being left by the person who are deceased. In this case is Basri and how she deals with the death of her husband, who's actually been death a long time ago. But how someone wants to remember the death is also a big part of this movie, which how Basri wants to remember her husband as a soldier and as a hero, as a veteran hero, and by looking at his actual tomb, he wants to be remembered. He wants to remember how her, his husband, her husband was, and to tell the stories to her grandchildren and her great grandchildren that this is what your great grandfather was, and who is my husband 
actually and i'm really proud of him and that is the main idea but the the other thing i want to discuss is how this movie talks about words now the title itself talks about words by saying that this is a tale of other words meaning that this movie is talking really about how this story will really just told by conversations and words from its characters and it is a lot of conversations and there's a lot of he said she said in this movie particularly when um, Basri is really trying to find her husband tomb and she's asking a lot of veterans around central Java that might know who her husband is which is Prawiro that's her his name and really just talking about Prawiro's as a person as as a veteran and how he died is he still alive is he dead do you know where his graveyards are his resting place his last resting place and there's a lot about he said she said about uh, this movie meaning that it's a story that talks a lot that sometimes even spoken words cannot be trusted that humans can make mistakes from their words and the other thing about words in this movie, a lot of it is talking about promise. But Prawiro promised that he wants to be a hero for his country and taking back his country back in the colonial era. And if he didn't make it, then he's not coming back. Yet at the same time, does it true? Is it the promise that Prawiro gives to Basri is true? And by this journey that he she led through she's trying to reach that promise back like i want to see my husband for the last time even if that means i just want to see his actual tomb and bahsri really embodies the idea that she is really trying to find her husband and i found out after reading a couple of articles that the story about Bah Praviro is loosely also based on Bah Poncho life, the actress. Uh, in order to make Bah Poncho really understood the story and really can embody Bah Sri in its fullest. And I think Bah Poncho was really natural and yet at the same time profound. There's a couple scenes when she talks really, really quietly and slow like she's aching and just embody the sadness from not seeing her husband and i think that is remarkable considering that she is 98 years old and that means also kudos for the casting director and also the assistant director who coach bah Boncho because there's it's a lot of effort to really shoot a movie with 98 year old actor just because first, there's always that fitness problem that she cannot really endure a lot of shooting time. Second, it's also about she cannot have a lot of lines that really need to be uh, memorized. But that's the brilliance of this is that rather than making Bah Poncho memorize lines, they wanted to just, you know what, tweak the name of her her actual husband and just use it as a really natural dialogue so that she can embody Basri really well. So kudos because this is a really hard movie to make. And the other one thing that I really want to talk about that common theme of this movie is about soldiers, veterans, and heroism. Uh, when we talk about soldiers, the word soldiers, if we did not give a context to it, there will be polarizing results. Because when we talk about soldiers in colonial era, they are considered heroes. Uh, they are the ones who take back our countries, therefore they are our heroes and we're thankful for them. But when we talk about soldiers in the new order, post-colonial, it's a triggering word because there's so much baggage and hate filled in that word because of how soldiers treated uh, civilians back in the day in the new order. 
and that polarizing results is stoic by Mas Bebe in some of the scenes where the conversation is really about the soldiers and how uh, they treated a village back then just to make a dump and they are really planning a fear to civilians while they're supposed to protect us, they're soldiers. But that is the dark truth about our country back in the day that even the one the forces who supposed to treated us as a real person and protect us as a citizen of the country becomes an enemy to us and becomes the force that break and destroy everything they had as a civilians and that is seen through conversations particularly this one scene this mundane scene when one of the uh, the grandkids of ba three is searching her and while she's talking to one of the civilians or one of the people in the village they talk about the situation in that village before but in his context the grandkids context he's talking about soldiers in colonial eras but the other people the civilians seeing this in a context of in the new order and that conversation gone south because of different understanding of that word without confirming wait which era we're talking about when it comes to soldiers and that to me shows how we cannot stop remember that dark days of indonesia and it's seen through this movie that i think it's one of the thesis statement that Perry purbanegara want to say it in this movie and also talking about soldiers that there's that element of heroism which as i talk with my friends who are originally from that area in Yogyakarta, in Gunung Kidul, he talks about how soldiers are very glorified. The colonial soldiers, veterans, are very glorified to the point that everything that they, they did in their life is forgivable. And that means that we sometimes take granted the word pahlawan, heroes, that it became an excuse to do everything what they want just because they have that title. Um, so that was sobering to me to watch in Ziara. Um, aside from the common theme, I want to talk about how the research of this movie is really well done. Particularly when I talk also about with my friend who are local in Gurung Kidul, he said that it they are specifically cast the people to talk in a dialect that is so different. For example, uh, the grandkids and Basri talks in a different dialect with other people from the place that they uh, visit because it is a different area in Jakarta with its own dialect. And then there's a scene where there's a person who died from hanging suicide and turns out Gunung Kidul has the highest number of suicide from hanging in Indonesia. And seeing a person death by suicide is a common thing in the area. Which says that the filmmaker really knows and really research the area that story comes from. And I appreciate that a lot. Even though I didn't get that reference before, after talking with a lot of people, uh, with some people, I get it and I appreciate it more. That sense of detail. You should definitely watch this movie before it's been taken down in cinema because sometimes these movies tend to be taken down pretty quickly from its initial release because of the lack of audience. Although it's been a week or so, I think it's been two weeks and it's still going strong this movie in the cinema so before it's taken down and it's only played in selected cinema so definitely check out if there is a showing near you and if there is go run and watch this movie as this is a very distinct cinematic experience that you should try sometime 
the ones that really opens your eye that there's this kind of movie made by Indonesian, which is very much an international quality. And I am so proud that we come this far, making a movie which such boldness, such quietness, yet such explosiveness when it comes to messaging. So if you watch this movie and you have a lot to say, come discuss it with me. So just post a comment on our Instagram page at invalid.opinion or post it on Facebook at facebook.com slash opinion invalid. Thank you so much for listening to this bonus episode. I'll see you guys next week. And please take my word with a grain of salt. <laughs>